Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 7 for chapter 6. In this video, we will introduce um, the concept of face portrait and explain how to draw a face portrait. So um, we will start with an example. This is the example from the previous video we had where we solved an x prime equal ax where a is a 2 by 2 matrix with uh, two eigenvalues given here as lambda 1 lambda 2 so they are real and one is negative and the other is positive and the corresponding eigenvectors v1 and uh, v2 okay and that shall be v2 and then with that given one can form the general solution so in general if you have two eigenvalues and two eigenvectors that are distinct and they're all real then the general solution is a linear combination of two solutions one is e to the lambda 1 t times v1 and the other is e to the lambda 2 t times v2 multiplied by arbitrary constant putting in the values we have here and then we can write out um, the general solution. Now we want to talk about face portrait. So this is a 2 by 2 system. So there are only two unknowns, x1 and x2, the two components. So this forms a two-dimensional plane. Then um, at every time t the solution x1 and x2 is a point in this plane and then as t changes or in particular as t um, increases then the value of x1 and x2 will change and if you trace that point so the point will be moving and if you trace that point as t changes and you get a trajectory of solution and these are called face portraits Okay, so um, one important um, feature of the discussion we're having now, they are restricted to the case that the matrix A is non-singular. That is, all eigenvalues are non-zero. Therefore, um, and if you start in the origin x bar equal to zero, this will be a critical point which is also called an equilibrium point, which means solutions starting there will not move. So in this case, if A is non-singular, that the origin here is the only critical point such that x prime will equal zero. Now we'll discuss how to draw such face portrait. So clearly, as we see, for different values of the constant c1 and c2, we'll get a different trajectory. So there are many, many of them. And the discussion will follow the following pattern. That is, um, first we would think one of them is zero, either c1 or c2, and then consider the trajectory. So there'll be two cases. And then and we'll consider the general case where c1, c2 are both non-zero and discuss how the trajectories will be. So the first case is assuming now c1 is zero. Then we can write the solution x bar is c2 e to the lambda 2 v2. Okay. So what does it mean? That means uh, um, in the plane x1 and x2, and this vector here is a scalar multiple of v2, the second eigenvector. So here we show it in the graph. Um, v1 is in this direction and v2 is in this direction. So there is this line through the origin in the direction of v2. And then as c changes, all these x bars will lie on this line with different magnitude. Okay, so first we can say that the, it's a traje the trajectory is a straight line through the origin in the direction of the second eigenvector. And now how does the trajectory um, move as time increases?
So this movement is denoted by an arrow in the direction of the movement as t increases. So here we see that lambda 2 is 3, which is bigger than 0. So here is 3t here. As for a fixed c2, positive or negative, let's think c2 is positive. And then um, as t increases, this vector, the length of the vector grows. So you'll be moving away from the origin in this direction. And then second, you can consider if C2 is negative, then um, both um, coordinate x1 and x2 will be negative, so you will be on this branch. And then as t grows, the magnitude becomes bigger, because lambda 2 is positive. And then therefore, the trajectory will move down. So um, the common feature in the two cases would be the trajectories are all going away from the origin and the magnitude grows and grows to infinity as time goes to infinity. Okay, so once we have understood that case, the second discussion can be a bit simpler. Mm, let's consider when c2 is zero, then the solution is c1 times an exponential times v1. Therefore, we immediately can conclude that the trajectories is um, they are straight line through the origin in the direction of the first eigenvector. Okay, so v1 is in this direction, therefore the trajectory is along this line. And now we need to determine the direction of the arrows, the movement of the trajectory as time grows. This we can information we can obtain from um, the sign of lambda 1, lambda 1 is less than 0, then regardless of the sign of c1, as t goes to infinity, this exponential term goes down to 0, so the solution approaches the origin. Therefore, we see that all the arrows along this trajectory will be pointing towards the origin. Now, finally, we consider the general case where c1 and c2 are both not zero. Then, from the previous discussion, we see that um, asymptotically, as t grows, the solution will move from the line x1 equal to half x2. So that is the line in the direction of v1, this direction. Mm -hmm. As time grows, it will go to the line x1 equal to half x2, and that's in the direction of v2 here as time grows. Okay, So um, then we can just um, sketch it because we are interested in um, qualitative behavior here. So let's take a region, let's say um, this region here. And then the solution would come long ago from the v1 direction and with arrow pointing down and then it will bend and then it will approach v2 direction as time grows and keep approaching it and asymptotically in this direction as t goes to infinity. Okay, so you basically draw this kind of a hyperbola line and then you look at the direction. This is going down, this is going up, therefore the arrows will be pointing in this direction. Okay, and then similarly in the other three regions. So in this region, for example, we can draw this hyper hyperbola line and then we see the arrows will be coming in from here and going out from there and therefore with this arrow. And then similarly, this region, this hyperbola line will come in from here and going out from there with this arrow. And then finally, in this region, then it will come in from here and going away from here and with, the, with this arrow. Now let's introduce a definition for this type of uh, critical point. So. If the A matrix has two real eigenvalues of opposite signs, which means they're distinct eigenvalues since they are having opposite signs, then this origin, which is a critical point, 
is called a saddle point. The term saddle comes from the shape of these trajectories. They are all um, a curve, which is like a saddle that you can sit on. Now let's also introduce this notion of stability. So if a critical point is a stable critical point or non-stable, unstable critical point. So let's introduce this just in plain words. So for solutions nearby a critical point, um, as time grows, how does it behave? And that behavior determines the stability. In case one, if the solutions go away and the amplitude grows, then we say it's unstable. Second case, if the solution approaches the um, critical point, um, all the solutions nearby, any one you pick, okay, then it is called asymptotically stable. And there is a third case, um, that is, if the solution stays nearby the critical point, but the amplitude does not grow, and the solution also does not approach the critical point, then it is called a stable critical point, but not asymptotically. Now, what about the stability of a saddle point? Well, we see that um, for set a point, most of the nearby points you pick, the solution will grow, will move away and will grow into infinity amplitude. And therefore, it is unstable. Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about how to draw face portrait for set of points. From um, what we have discussed so far, we have the impression that in order to draw the face portrait for saddle point, one only need the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. We can talk about the general case. Let's say we have two eigenvalues, lambda 1 and lambda 2. Lambda 1 is less than 0, lambda 2 is bigger than 0, similar to our example. And then we have two corresponding eigenvectors, v1 and v2. Then one can immediately form the general solution, which is a linear combination of the two parts of the solution. And then we can repeat our discussion for the example for this general case, more or less in the same way. So if C1 is zero, then the solution is only in the direction of V2. So, and a line in the direction of V2 through the origin is a trajectory. And then since lambda 2 is bigger than 0, the amplitude of the vector grows asymptotically, and therefore all the arrows should be pointing away from the origin. Similarly, we can discuss the case where C2 is 0, and then the solution contains only the C1 and lambda 1 V1 part in this form. And we see that the solution, this is a scalar multiple of uh, V1. Therefore, a line through the origin in the direction of uh, V1 is a trajectory. And now let's check the arrows, which is determined by the sign of lambda 1. Lambda 1 is less than 0. So the solution will all approach origin along this trajectory, and the arrows are pointing towards the origin. OK, now we see that these two lines through the origin cut the plane into four regions. And now we need to draw at least one trajectory in each region to see the behavior of the solutions there. So in this region, we have the general case, that is, C1 and C2 are both non-zero. So we need to know the um, asymptotic behavior, okay? meaning as time goes to plus infinity and negative infinity. 
So we see that as time goes to plus infinity, since lambda 1 is negative, that term becomes smaller and smaller and negligible, and then the solution approaches only the term involving lambda 2. Similarly, as t goes to negative infinity, then um, the, the term involving lambda 2 will decay very fast to zero, and the solution will approach the term only involves lambda 1. And we see the asymptotic behavior here are exactly along the two straight lines we just made, taking in the direction of the eigenvectors. Okay, and uh, in words, um, instead of this formula, we can talk in words, we'll have the following conclusion, that is, all trajectories, they would come from the direction of v1, and then will approach the direction of v2 as time grows. Okay, so we can um, summarize here in the graph, here is the case that lambda 1 is less than 0, lambda 2 is bigger than 0, and we just generically pick two directions, v1 and v2, and then we will draw the line in the direction of v1 through the origin, and since lambda 1 is less than 0, the arrows will be pointing towards the origin. Then we draw the direction in v2 through the origin here, and then since lambda 2 is bigger than 0, then the arrows are pointing away from the origin. And then in the um, general case, in each of these regions, we will draw a hyperbola curve, and they will all come in from the direction of v1 and approach the direction of v2. Also, you can just look at these arrows and follow them. So this one will go up, and this one goes to the left, and this one goes down, and this one goes to the right. Okay, and then we see from the graph the um, instability of the settle point. So if you perturb a little bit, get away from the origin, look at nearby solutions, they will eventually approach in the direction of v2 with growing amplitude, right? If you're nearby here, it grows there. If you're nearby here, it grows there. And if you're nearby here, it grows there. So it's called unstable. There is uh, only an exception that is in the direction along um, v1 there. If you're exactly on this, and then you will approach the origin. But that is a, a like a point um, in, a, in the whole domain of 2D. So these are exceptional points. And also, if you are on this graph, and then you have a small perturbation, and then you will go away. So they align like that, and they don't count um, when you talk about stability. Okay, so the settle point is unstable. Okay, so that's all I have to say for um, face portrait for set of points. I hope that is uh, easy to understand. And then uh, next time we'll look into more complicated cases. I look forward to see you then.